Oh yeah? Yeah, there's actually two specific rules of uh, of how it works. Um, they define it as any weapon loaded or unloaded originally designed as designed as a shoulder weapon utilizing a self contained cartridge from a number whatever the fuck. And, anyway's not gonna read that. It's um barrel length of less than 18 inches for smoothbore weapons and 16 inches for for uh, rifle weapons. Anything that's less than a uh, .225 caliber is not gonna be included into this rule. So basically, you could own a blunderbuss with a six inch barrel and be completely legal. From what, from the way how it sounds, yeah. They also because, have uh, blunderbuss. Well, the thing about a uh, smoothbore is typical he rifles are smoothbore. Yeah, they also included one one about a soft rifle as well. It's um, let's see here. Um, barrels less than 16 inches, which has been modified to an overall length of less than 26 inches. Armed to death. Soldiers. Damn, dude. That's, yeah. that's very fucking uh, limited to a lot of things. On a completely di amusing note, though, they, they, um, machine guns, as, or at least the way how they, they define it is, a weapon that, that shoots or is designed to shoot automatically without mainly reloading more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. It is, um... It is illegal for um, aggressive or offensive purposes, but you can you can still own them as long as you register within 24 hours. Like, uh, yeah, you're right, class three weapons. I mean, Virginia is actually pretty liberal liberal with uh, with, with guns. I mean, we the, <laughs> the state has the fucking NRA in it. A bunch of rocks is gonna do. This is true. Uh, there was a while back. Uh, I think it was one of the um, flyover states that was trying to do that little thing where they would not follow the uh, federal laws on assault weapon bans, the ones that are still in place as far as um, fully automatic rifles and handguns. And the reason why uh, their reasoning for it was if they manufactured them within the state, it wouldn't contradict interstate commerce laws that the federal government has in place. And Louisiana two years back wanted to do something similar. Basically, as long as you buy a Louisiana-made um, assault rifle, you're legal. But the federal government won't allow, won't allow it. It's under control. Imagine if they knew Hugh Darrow was in here talking about So, K General? I wouldn't want to go out there. I have to know a couple of things here and there, but in terms of uh, my, my shooting experience, the only thing I've ever fired was a 12-gauge uh, double-barrel shotgun, that's about it. I have a... Um, I was trained for my job in the use of uh, revolvers, so I'm actually pretty good with shooting those at self-defense ranges. But I own a 12 gauge, um, I own a 357 revolver, uh, I own a 92 FS, and a uh, 380 Walther PPK clone. All the weapons in the world can will not protect you from my cock. But see, I wouldn't need a weapon to protect me from that. I'd take it willingly. Aw, shit. Oh, here's another thing that uh, Virginia has defined as well. It's called the assault firearm, which is any semi-automatic center fire rifle or pistol, which is equipped with a magazine that will hold more than 20 rounds of ammunition or designed by the manufacturer to accommodate a silencer or equipped with a folding stock. Meaning illegal? I don't know. I, just, I found it as a definition here. Oh, it's just the definition. Yeah. Well, I know in Louisiana, here's the fun thing. It's completely legal to own a silencer and all that according to federal laws. However, to get any of these class 3 items, fully automatic rifles, fully automatic pistols, silencer, suppressor, what have you, you have to buy them within state and the transfer has to be overseen by a class 3 federal firearms license holder. There are no today, class three federal firearm federal firearm license holders within the state of Louisiana. There, you agree? So many people. So you can't. So you effectively cannot own them the in Louisiana being urged to the unless you transfer them here. And all because of the technology. Now, from what I'm reading, which isn't actually coming from the state of Virginia itself, we don't require permits for anything except for uh, concealed carry uh, carrying uh, now handguns. My old friend David wants me to lead us. We need the concealed carry here. I've been thinking about taking it, but it seems like such a pain in the ass because. I already carry my gun in my car, which is legal by uh, Louisiana law, because we have castle law here, and within that law, your car is considered an extension of your home. Yeah. And I'm not gonna fucking carry a gun into a Walmart or a gas station like some kind of, you know, jackass. Badass. Oh, actually, um, actually I was wrong about that. We, here, we, you have to have a, a uh, permit to carry a handgun, both open carry and concealed. Uh, can I wow, that's pretty outside? dick. Well, it's, um, 
it's a whole entire, entire uh, conceal, concealability of we going uh, part of the weapon. It's a smaller and weapon, and rank track down one of I think it makes DLs. sense for them to, to keep track of uh, who's, who's walking around with them. I mean... But Adam... But that's the thing. A criminal is not going to follow the law. They never will. That's why they're a criminal in the first yeah. place. It's, um... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's um, just where they can't clamp down on the people, if anything else. Yeah, it's just to clamp down on the law-abiding citizen. That's how all these laws works, especially regarding firearms. Because, I mean, look at the 80s and the mid-90s when all these black gangsters were still running around with AKs and, uh, and MAC-10s, and tech, tech 9s Even after the ban, the 1986 ban, they were still using them because they're fucking criminals. Yeah. It's just like prohibition laws of anything else. I mean, yeah, <laughs> people still got the, got got their alcohol, and here in this case, the, people are still gonna get their guns regardless. That's the reason why the DC gun ban didn't work. There's a reason why the DC gun ban made things worse because the average citizen who is gonna follow the law is not gonna be protecting themselves, so the criminal has free reign. Now, here's my favorite part of the argument: it's like, it's like someone breaks, breaks into your house, and he and um, he's probably gonna kill you. You're, you're currently locked into a room. You don't have a gun, and the and and one of the things that those people will tell you, will expect you to say is call the police. That's a completely ideal option because, quite frankly, if he's trying to kill me, he's going to probably figure out where I am in less than a couple of minutes. That the thing about me. break ins are very fast, too. No lock stops a break in, it only impedes it. I mean, I'm pretty sure in, in my house there's at least three or four ways I can, I can uh, break the door down with that, without having to use the windows. Definitely. The, that's what I like about Louisiana law. We don't have a retreat first clause. If someone comes into my house without my permission, basically barging in, I can take my 12 gauge, put it up to their mouth, and give them a 12, uh, give them a uh, buckshot New mouth hold wash, out of? and they'll isn't be that, gone. Isn't that intent to kill though? What's that? Access. I, I think Texas defines it in the same way that um, they have a lot laws where where you can. Um, where, where you can kill someone that, that uh, unlawfully enters a house, though, but you cannot aim for the head because that's apparently uh, considered intent to kill or something like that. Um, so, so instead of buckshot, why don't you just take a roll of quarters, stuck it in the barrel, and you know? That won't work. Uh, um, I if know only. On... Shut up, house. I know that on my job, right. I am not allowed to shoot for the head. Your men did a good job. Because, well, for one, it's excessive, and it's seen as vigilanteism. Like. If I shoot for the leg and say that I shot for the leg with the purpose to disable, then it was excessive use of deadly force, and I'm not protected by the law. Wait, shooting for the leg? Really? Yeah, but because here's the thing. In my line of work, if I pull my revolver in defense of myself or someone else, I have to shoot with the intent to kill because the moment I put my hand on that gun, shut up, Elst. If I put my hand on that weapon, just putting it on, not removing it from the holster, is a display of deadly force. Pulling it out of the holster is use of deadly force, which means I can put my hand on it, display, put my other hand up, and say stop or I will shoot. And if they back off, that's fine, but if I pull it from the holster, they have to die. I have to pull the trigger, shoot them in the heart, kill them. Or else, it's my ass. It's pretty so, dumb. So if they end up standing there and not doing anything, like, like they're, um, they're... You know that whole entire Mexican, Mexican uh, standoff that, that, ha that um, apparently does occur in, from time to time? Yeah. What if that happens? Uh, if that happens, I'd better pull the trigger and somebody better drop, because I'm displaying deadly force and I'm not supposed to even display it unless I'm going to use it and somebody dies. So it's pretty much weighted against you in most cases. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But now, as far as self-defense outside of my work, um, as long as they're dead, I mean, I could just say, well, hey. I was a little bit inaccurate. I was excited. Fuck it, they're dead. No, officer, I didn't aim for the head. But, um... I don't know, they moved funny. I aimed for the chest and somehow, I don't know. A little bit of adrenaline pumping, it went for the head. I thought they were gonna kill me. I feared for my life. That's not vigilanteism in that case, especially if it's self-defense within the home. Oh, here's an interesting thing about the, um... about disqualification on, uh... Who can own a uh, weapon here? 
Um, anyone who's been dis dishonorably discharged from the, the U.S. Armed Forces is not allowed to own a gun, which can, which makes sense. Oh, that's pretty fucked up. In the, within Virginia? Yep. Hmm. Well, I think the states are allowed to do that. Well, I think it makes sense. I mean, do you really want one? I mean, there was actually an interesting thing about this, um, this, um, Vietnam vet who, um, who was mentally unstable, who, um, refused to listen to a police officer who pulled him over, I think, for, for uh, speeding on, on the highway. He was, dan he was dancing around, the he pulls out his uh, his M16 and shoots the uh, police officer several times before executing Boss him we're heading back when to the guy was down. Your tracks up, Chanko, now, I would like now. to add that I think it would be more fair for them to consider the, uh, week, the circumstances in the dishonorable discharge. Because some asset who gets dishonorably discharged for being AWOL one too many times, time like the present. Let's get going. come on. Hop in. But if he's dishonorably discharged for being violent or for being insane, yeah, take away his gun privileges. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's probably about the best thing right there, but at the same time, it's a very big, it's a very good blanket policy as well. I mean, I mean as far as I know with the U.S. Armed Forces, disarmable discharges are pretty extreme uh, punishments. Justifiable, too.